Hi everyone, this is Miss Hanton and I thought I would make a video for going over what is expected in math for Monday. And if you pull out your uh, packet three, you can open it up to the next page and you'll see this calendar. For math on Monday, you guys will be doing page 242 in chapter 14 as well as extra math. And each of you should have your red math workbook. And chapter 14 is a new chapter that we're starting and we will be going over time. So I brought home an extra copy of this. And I'm sorry that I can't um, turn my camera to show myself. My phone on my camera doesn't allow me to do that. But this is a review of what you guys learned in first grade telling time to the hour and so I thought I would show you the parts of the clock and review that with you before you do this but at the top you will be writing down um, what the hour says on the clock and you just need to trace the hour hand and then down here you will be looking at the time on the analog clock and then writing it down on a digital clock. Remember that the hour would go would be written right here and the minutes would be written on this side of a digital clock. But let's go ahead and take a look at a analog clock. And you know what is crazy is that Miss Hanton did not have an analog clock in my in my house so I wanted to pull up a picture of one and go over it with you so this blue hand is a shorter hand and we call this the hour hand and then this hand right here is what we call the minute hand and to keep that straight one thing I've always told uh, my students in the past and what I want to share with you is that if you look at the word hour, it is shorter than the word minute. So you can just keep in mind that the word hour in of itself is short, so it's the shorter hand on a clock, and the word minute is longer, so it's the longer hand on a clock. Then, um, on an analog clock, this is the second hand, and that rotates quickly around the clock. So a clock, the hands on a clock will always move around clockwise. So from right to left, okay, in this direction. And then um, the numbers that you see on the face of a clock is what helps you to determine what hour it is. And then these tick marks right here represent the minutes. So, there are five tick marks between each number on the face. So, whenever you are counting the tick marks that are right by the, the hour number, you can count by fives. So, let's go ahead and do that. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. So that tells me that there are 60 minutes in one hour and that the minute hand would have to go around the clock one full time in order for it to be a new hour. And I actually brought home this clock that many of you guys might recognize from our morning meetings. So um, as you can see, when you are counting the minutes, you can count by fives, okay? So if I were to move this one more time, we just went from three o'clock to four o'clock. So it's a new hour. And when it's a new hour, the minute hand will always be on the 12. And instead of saying 460, we always say four o'clock. So whenever 
the minute hand is back on the 12, it starts a new hour, and you will always say o'clock to represent the minutes because it's starting over, okay? Um, and then, so, like I said, you see a tick, you see the um, second hand, which is the thin hand, oh no, oh my gosh, okay. And that moves around more quickly than the hour hand or minute hand will. The red hand, the second hand, will make one full rotation. And when it makes one full rotation, that means that this minute hand will move to the next tick mark and that represents one minute. So there are 60 seconds in one minute. However, if the minute hand makes one full rotation around the clock, so now we're at five o'clock, each tick mark represents one minute and there are 60 minutes in one hour, okay? So um, I just wanted to review the parts of a clock for you. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me. Um, I hope you found this helpful and have a good day.